we're back at the deer factory. Today, we'll talk with some of the folks who work hard to keep this line moving. We'll also see a portion of the 3R and 4 Series assembly. Sit back and enjoy. And so this is the start of our premium cut line. So this is where we make the 3R, 4M, and 4R models. And so you can see we, we start off with uh, just the transaxle, the, the tunnel housing, and the rear transmission. And we actually sub up all of the hydraulic lines and the brackets and the components that go on that. So we are building these units from the ground up. You sub up the transmission here, which is the rear end, and then we uh, across the aisle, which we'll go see here in a minute, is where we sub up the front end and the front frame, and then they'll come together here in the marriage station. You may have to move here in a minute, but but you can see we're at our made-up station. Yeah. So this is the point where we join the transaxle, the rear end of the tractor, with the front end okay. that we've subbed up. Okay. And so you see they've already joined them together. They're hoisting them up. And they're going to bring it over here and set it on this AGV. So we're going to oh, have to back cool. up here a minute. And so this really is the start of our main line. And then as we've shown earlier, that transmission was subbed up on our transmission subline, and then the front end with the engine and the frame, and that front axle on our engine line. And we talked about some of our quality controls, Tim, and so you know, what's great about this is that we're able to interlock this hoist with the critical torques that they're doing at that made-up station. If we don't get a reading of good torques from the uh, transaxle to the engine, we disable this hoist. And they're not able to continue on until we can verify uh, with an engineer or a supervisor that that assembly step is done correctly before we put it on the AGV and move on. Okay. So here's the next transaxle coming in. So that's a 3R right there, and that's been subbed up back there on our transmission subline. And it has its build paperwork, and then they're picking up the front end for that 3R, and they'll scan both build paperwork to make sure that we're matching up the right transaxle with the right engine based on the customer order. And I guess that table's just going to allow it to come together. It's just going to bring it together when they're yep, ready. Yep, that's right. So you can see he's getting his hardware started, and then it's on a rail system, and it's set up so it'll, it'll be perfectly aligned when he brings them together. You know, so this is our made-up table, but one of the things you notice is all the little things that these guys are doing in between, right? Um, they're, they're putting on brackets, they're running torque tools, they're aligning things. So one of the great things about our workforce is they are highly engaged, and they do an incredible job. We have what we call a CI process. That stands for continuous improvement. Yeah. Because these folks are they're building these machines day in and day out. They really are the experts of our process. And so we look to them to help provide improvement suggestions on hey, how, how can we be more efficient? How can we work more safely? Uh, you know, what are our top quality issues that you're seeing in your area and what can we do to make things better? Yeah, I can see that while there's a lot of automation here, it still depends on these guys to do a good job. Yes, I mean there's yeah. There's a, a lot of, of things that they're putting on and, and they're putting their own passion and skill in. But we have a highly aligned workforce. They, they are engaged and everybody comes to work every day committed to building the best tractors we can. Bailey, what do you do for deer? So I'm a manufacturing engineer on this assembly line. What does a manufacturing engineer do? So I design the process for how to put together the tractor. So it's what order do the parts go on the tractor, what tools do they use, where the parts go on the line. That okay, kind of so you decide whether they uh, put a certain oil line on before they put the engine or after or whatever. Yep, exactly. Okay. Well, what kind of training do you have to have for this job? So I went to school for engineering, okay. and um, then I went through a development program at John Deere up in Iowa. Okay. So why are you on the floor today? working on a safety concern that some of the operators have okay, trying so to improve the process. An operator raised a safety concern and you're out here evaluating mm -hmm. the legitimacy of the current and how to and how to solve it. Yep, exactly. I like it. Well thanks for talking with us. Yeah, no problem. So they're putting the cab on. Yeah, so here's where we're doing our cab drop. Uh, this is on a 3R. So you notice that uh, this really is a team effort here. So there's, there's a lot of guys working to make sure that, um, one, all the parts are out of the way and nothing gets knocked loose or damaged, but also they're communicating before they put that down and as they lower it to make sure that everybody's hands are free and that uh, we're going to be able to drop this safely. So this is one of our deluxe cabs, but like we were talking about earlier, these cabs come into us just as the frame and the roof and the front windshield, and then we're able to build it into a 3R standard deluxe, a 4R standard deluxe, or one of our... Uh, uh, one of our versions that we ship to Europe. And so so the from, same from frame. the same cab frame, 
we'll actually make six different cabs out of that. Six different cabs, okay. And get those pieces started before they'll drop it down completely. So you notice here, too, like you see the guy holding the, he's got those hydraulic yeah, lines with that little rope there. So that's a great example of one of these CI projects that our operators come up with, where they say, hey, it's hard for me to reach my hand in there and hold these things out of the way. Let's make some fittings with the rope on it and, you know, pull those out of the way. It lets them do their job more safely, more efficiently. It also shows the isolation of the cab. It's no wonder it's so quiet. Yeah, because it's got all those rubber isolation right mounts. Four isolators, that's right. So now it's on, so now they're going to go ahead and connect all their electrical connections with the, the cab harness, they'll connect the steering lines, they'll go ahead and torque those cab mounts down and uh, make the mechanical leakages. Good work, man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. <laughs> Satorji, right? Yes. yes what, do you, what do you do for deer, Satorji? Uh, I'm currently the uh, production supervisor for the pickup line, uh, okay. but I've been with John Deere for uh, 15 years currently. 15 years. 15 years. Uh, so you're supervisor for the, and this is kind of the, we would say the three R's and the fours and four R's. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Uh, we build, a, uh, this is a combined line, we build the cabs and we build the open station, both the four series and the three series uh, R's on this line. Okay. What is a typical task that you do as a supervisor? So as a production supervisor, I'm responsible to make sure that we meet the daily goals, uh, quality, efficiency, and uh, delivery uh, as well as safety on a daily basis. Our expectation is to make sure that we meet customer demands. Started uh, working with John Deere, like I said, 15 years ago as a part-time student. And then I got on board uh, uh, as a full-time when I finished my undergrad uh, from uh, electrical engineering. Oh, so you're an electrical engineer. Yes, I am an electrical engineer. And then I went back to school while at the same time working. I uh, did receive my master's degree in uh, industrial supervision management. Eventually went back for a project management uh, degree uh -huh. and finished all that also. But throughout my years at uh, John Deere, I've held uh, different roles, uh, supplier quality engineer uh, with all new product programs that we've uh, already brought into, uh, uh, into production. Uh, I've been a manufacturing engineer before also, and I'm currently a production supervisor after I've already done an electrical engineering role as well. What's your favorite part of your job? Oh, I love it. It's very interesting, uh, leading the people, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that we're pleasing our customers on a daily basis, and then uh, coming to work every day and fulfilling our dreams. Yeah, I mean, we see it here. We, we see that the workers just have a positive attitude and a exactly. lot of passion for the job. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of that's because of the attitude you set. Exactly. Hard-working folks, always driving for nothing but success, right? It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Tim. Appreciate it. So this, this is one of our running stations. So again, this is that, that first time that we fire up the tractor. You'll notice a few things. We got quite a few things connected here. Yeah. So one of them is our hydraulic fluids is connected so that we do our fluid fill here right before they start this process. The other one is you'll notice that electrical cable. So that's actually plugged into the controller of the tractor. So on, on the P cuts, because we have that electrical control unit, yeah. uh, we're able to go on there. And now a technician here is running it through basically a full functional check. Okay, so, so a little diagnostic on the tractor to yeah. make sure it's hooked yeah, up right. And we're, we're doing a diagnostic while checking, you know, all the ranges of the transmission, PTO function, MFWD function, RPMs, throttle, all of those things. And we're looking to verify that, that everything is per our design specs and that this thing is functioning as it should be. You'll notice we actually have three run-in bays and that is because of the length of the time it takes to go through all these checks. Okay. Want to make sure that this isn't a bottleneck on the line, so we split it into three lanes and then it reconsolidates before we put on the wheel and tire. Darnell. Yes. What do you do for the company? All right, so uh, my name is Darnell Nicholas. I am the business unit leader for the compact utility tractor plant. Okay. So I have responsibility for uh, production for the whole factory, essentially. Oh, the whole factory. Wow, okay. So what, what do you do on a typical day? typical day, um, I'm talking to my supervisors and I'm also interfacing with our manufacturing engineers, quality engineers, and material coordinators to make sure that we have everything ready to go for production. Okay. How long you been with Deer? Been with Deer for about uh, 12 years. Spent nine of those years in Waterloo in a large tractor okay. factory. And the last uh, three years I've been here. So if somebody wanted to do your job, what kind of education? training is necessary to, to, to have a position like yours? So I have an engineering background. I was a systems engineer. Okay. Um, 
but I didn't really use that. I went into the Army after college, so I spent 10, uh, 10 years in the Army in the military intelligence field. I'll say for a position like this, uh, you need to have very good uh, people skills and uh, people management skills. And that's really essentially it. So before this, uh, I spent some years as supervisor and general supervisor. So I was a person on the line talking to the technicians, making sure they had everything they needed, um, keep them motivated, and um, getting some ideas from them for food production. Would you say there are a lot of veterans in the uh organization here? Uh, especially for this factory, yeah, it's surprising how many veterans we actually do have working in the factory. Okay. Nice to meet you, DJ. Tractor Tim, you too. What do you do here? Well, uh, what I do, um, I inspect the tractors. I try to make sure I get out the best quality for the tractors. Um, I examine it, look at all the defects, the decals and stuff, any leaks. I check for and everything, make sure everything's in spec. Okay, so the, 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 the tractor's totally finished by the time you get to see it. Yes, sir. It's ready to go to the dealer, and you're the one last check. Yes, sir. So I'm nothing get gets one. by DJ. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's supposed to get by me, uh, yes. They've already been on the, the test track with the rumble. I do that. You do I, that? I'm part of that so process, you have to rumble and do all that stuff. <laughs> I check it, shaking and twisting, yes, sir. Uh -huh. I'm part did, of that check. Did you do this kind of work the whole time? No, I did not. You started I, the line? I started from the line all the way down to the bottom of the kit line, worked my way to the tires, went to the 5,000, 4,000 special projects, and then I worked my way up to the quality area. I mean, this seems, like a, this seems like a fun job. It really is, it's nice. It, you get to learn so much more about the track than just putting this one piece together. And yeah. you move around and you can see where it started from just the engine and build all the way to the tires and see how things fun. Well, nice to meet you, DJ. You too, Captain Tim. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is the last of our videos from the Augusta factory. The earlier episode showed the details of the one series assembly process. Check it out. Thanks again to the folks at Deer for opening their facility. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.